Okay, so what we are going to do, we're going to look into how you would set up your SQL Server for external communication with an S7 1500 or S7 1200. So, let's start by going to the support site. So, support industry Siemens, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, yes, it's a fresh new VM. Okay, so we go in the support site. We will now search for uh, SQL Microsoft Library. This is the library we will be using. Uh, so there you go, application example, how to connect 1500 to a database. Let's see the documentation. What is it that we should do? If you go here, uh, Microsoft SQL Server Express Basics. Okay, yeah, let's start by downloading Server Express. You could be using a different version of SQL Server, the full blown one, for example. But we're just going to use uh, this one, just as an example. Yeah. Uh, the install location, that's okay. Let's try to install this. It's going to download all the packages for us. So when this is finished, we're going to start with the actual installation. We go through the install. Then we'll configure uh, the SQL server so that it accepts um, connections from, from other devices so that we can then use S7-1500 or S7-1200 to actually connect to our SQL mm -hmm. database uh, and maybe push some data to it to connect with our um, IT systems, with our MES ERP systems, for example. So the download was successful now, SQL Server is installing. We are going to select the new server installation. Uh, yeah, we will read the license terms, accept them. Going to check for any updates. The installer now checks if all the rules are met. Yeah, that's all good. I don't need the machine learning services. Uh, let's leave the rest running. The default locations are okay for me. Now, the name of my instance is going to just be SQL Express. You might want to change it, for example. Yeah, that's all good. Auto start. Auto start for the server browser as well. Uh, mixed mode so that we can actually they, setting this to mixed mode means that we will be able to access our server also using SQL Server authentication and we don't necessarily have to be part of the same domain. This is our top secret password for um, the administrator. This is all good. Next. The manual also suggests that we download SQL Server Management Studio uh, just so that we can, we can actually manage our server. So uh, let's download this as well. In the meantime, how's our install? Our install is going well. So now let's quickly check what we actually need to do with it. Yeah, okay. I'm going to start installing this as soon as this guy is finished. Oh, I guess I might be good. Let's see if it complains. I do two things at the same time. Yeah, this looks quite happy. It's perfect. So, we need to set some things in the Server Configuration Manager. So, we go to SQL Server Configuration Manager. Yep. And here, if we follow the manual, we go to the server network configuration, we go to the protocols, uh, we need to enable TCP IP, this is required so that we can actually establish the connection. Uh, let's go here. Yeah, let's do what the manual tells us to do. So let's change our IP here to uh, our IPv4 which is dot zero dot, yeah, it's a hard question. Let's see what we are on. 
0.13. Yeah, let's enable this. Uh, let's set the TCP port to the default port of 1443. This should be all good. Okay. Uh, we need to restart our server. Uh, there's our server. Right click, restart. It's restarting the server for us. That's on this end. This should be fine. Um, we'll also need to add ourselves a new user on the server itself. So let's leave it like this. Add uh, the management studio installed, but it wants us to restart the PC. Let's see if we can not install it, not restart it, sorry. Um, so there's our Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. Is it gonna be okay? Is it gonna let us in? Come on, let me in. Of course, you know, if this doesn't work, then, then we just need to restart the PC. It's not a big deal, it's just a minor drawback. Nothing like some coffee. Happy days, I guess. So we could try with Windows authentication. This works fine. And we also said that we want to be able to connect with server authentication. So let's see if I can log in using the, the password I selected before. Yeah, this works fine. And the manual said go properties, go security. And here, make sure that this is taken. But this is actually the setting that we take when we're installing it, okay? Here in connections, we need to also make sure that uh, remote connections to servers are allowed. That's fine. What next? Next, we need to create ourselves a login. So we go security, we go logins. Yeah. We right click and new login. And my login name, I'm going to replicate what the manual suggests. So SQL underscore. S7 at uh, 1500. I will be using SQL Server authentication. So again, I need to define a password. Okay, so we should now create ourselves a new database as well. I'm gonna create the database um, S7 1500 SQL database. Yeah, that's why I have a new database. I'm gonna create myself a new table, just a test table if you wish. The table is gonna have columns of, let's say we're recording flow, uh, which would be an integer for us. We are recording uh, pressure. We are recording temperature. Yeah, both these guys with the integers. Let's save our table. We'll give the table name PLC data. Okay, so now if we refresh, we should see a table called PLC data. Just to make sure that the user that we have created can actually access this, let's disconnect. Let's try to connect using our user of SQL underscore S7 1500 with my top secret password. Ah, uh, oh, yeah, I, I take the box asking me to change the password. I hope I can put the same one. Yes, very nice. Let's just double check. Yeah, so I can see the database. Ah, uh, it's not accessible for me. This is what I was worried about. So we go back and we make sure that our user can actually access it. Oh, guess I should learn how to type. We go security, we go logins, and I use this guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's double check his properties. Um, and let's make sure that he actually can do this. Let's find our database, go to the properties of the database. Uh, now we have permissions here. Um, we have our SQL 1500 user. And we want to make sure that he can do things like he can connect, um, he can create new tables maybe, 
can execute commands, insert new things, you can select things as well, update, they should be, it was delete, there is delete. Uh, I think we should be fine with these uh, privileges. So let's go OK. And let's now um, disconnect. Let's try to connect again with our user. And see if he can now access the database. Yeah, it looks fine. Let's see if he can um, see all the results. Yeah, so currently it's empty. So we now have tested and we know that our user has the right privileges to actually be able to uh, select the entries from um, from our database. So we should be fine. Um, let's leave it like this. So this server should now have be fully configured um, to work with our S7 1200 or S7 1500. While the SQL Express instance should now be ready to accept inbound connections, the firewall might still be blocking them. So let's make sure that we add uh, correct rules. So let's start. Open the advanced settings of the Windows firewall. And here we can add new inbound rules. So we need to make sure that the poll that we selected, so 1433, uh, is going to be open. Yeah, SQL 1433. But also, if you have more instances, you also need to make sure that the port 1434 on UDP is open as well. One more thing to set would be to allow, to create a custom rule that will um, allow connections to our SQL servers. So if we just go here and find SQL server, here you can either narrow it down or you can just let anything go into SQL server and um, this is really up to you on how you configure it. These pre rules should allow us to connect to the SQL server from outside. So let's go back to my other VM. Let's fire up the SQL server management. We are going to be connecting to 192.168.0.13. That's the address of my SQL server. The name is SQL Express. Uh, I'm going to just try logging with the system administrator. That works perfectly fine. So now that your SQL Express server is up and running and ready to accept external connections, go on and check our other video uh, to learn how to use your S7-1200 or S7-1500 to actually connect to your SQL database.